Oh, that's weird. Usually that does something. Welcome back to the vlog everybody. Today we are at the shop and we are going to be starting off by doing something with this floppy sim. Look at this. Every time you turn the wheel, look how much the frame shakes. It's undrivable. It's actually ridiculous. I think if I shake this so much, look at this. Oh my gosh. So anyways, that's, that, that's my fault. I bought this cheap frame and it's terrible, but we're gonna make the frame better. So I'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna do that. We're gonna go to the home center and get some stuff. And then uh, we've got some other things going on around the shop to show you guys, especially with the Bogan 32. We've got some cool uh, angle mods and all that type of stuff to do. But anyways, first things first, let's go to the home center. Today's weather is definitely a little interesting, but uh, we're making do with what we've got. Ah, yes, Super Viva Home, the best home center in Japan. These places are always big and they generally have pretty much everything that you need. It's like uh, Home Depot really. It's the closest thing to it in the States or Bunnings in Australia. And recently this has been my favorite section because you can get all these little pieces of like metal strapping and all that kind of stuff. Things that you use for welding stuff, all the pipes, all that kind of box steel. Look at that, perfect. I think we got enough steel here for us to be able to do what we need to do and some more. But check out this Jimmy right here. This thing is sick. Always wanted to get into this kind of scene over here. It's got a little shovel on the back. Nice little like, I think that's a motorbike exhaust just popping out the side there. Adjustable coilovers and suspension. Very cool. You have friends with Jimmy's? No. No? Oh, okay. <laughs> so here's what we're gonna be working with. I've gone and grabbed some of the box metal that we picked up from the home center. We're gonna be bracing this top, like these top two bars. It's kind of like that. We're gonna weld these in place. And then I've got another bar that I'm going to be welding into the top here, just to add some more structural rigidity between the two arms from moving side to side. And I think we should be good. I'm also gonna weld a little bar on here so we have something to mount the hydro to. Now, I am a little worried still about this guy here. This does have a lot of play and probably needs some more support. So I might actually also weld something to tie this into here again, whether that's, you know, we come off the bar that's on the side here. Let's just kind of sit that there. Like if I get another bar and we do something, you know, to connect the two like this or something, that might be really beneficial or we just kind of do something like that so that this is like tacked in on the side there and supporting that as well. Um, but then again, it still may wobble a bit. So worst case scenario, I may need to just add another bar here and that'll really strengthen everything up because I know that this thing, these things snap off all the time. I've seen a bunch of reports and reviews online about it. So for first off though, we're gonna weld these in and these in and see how it feels and how it shakes. If it still moves around, we're gonna add another support there and kind of tie it all in. But yeah, we're kind of gonna use the welding blankets to try and stop anything from getting damaged, but should be pretty, pretty straightforward. This is amazing. Like it's moving the whole thing on the floor on the rug. It doesn't wobble anymore at all. Oh, this is great. This is exactly what we needed. Now we just have to weld this last piece on and we're done. I think like this, man. Nice. I'm now finished with welding everything. I set this upstairs and uh, the frame is so solid now. I love it. Before you'd spin the wheel and the whole frame would be wailing backwards and forwards as you guys saw at the start of the video. But yeah, we did pretty well. Um, everything we welded in was just one support there, another support there, and another support in here. 
and then I welded a support here down to here to give that some extra um, like stability because this all bends and breaks off eventually from shifting and then I also welded on the hydro here so it came out pretty good everything's pretty strong and sturdy it doesn't move around anything like it did before now bear in mind this is still trash when it comes to a sim frame this is trash this is absolutely disgusting but it's something that I can at least kind of have some fun with and mess around a little bit with before it would just fly all over the place and it was impossible to even enjoy at all so now this should make it a lot better and i want you guys to just remember this because we're about to go to gaia factory and do some more training and uh i wanted you guys to just kind of yeah see everything we went through just to make this cheap rig kind of less flimsy and now we're going to go deal with the real thing but uh i have to admit i'm getting pretty proud of my welds i feel like they're definitely getting better slowly but surely we're doing all right. Ooh, focus is a bit hard, but yeah, overall pretty good. The only time I struggled welding anything was when there was any contamination on this where I didn't uh, sand back all the paint off and stuff like that off the frame. But for the most part, it came out great. And this is gonna be fun. We'll probably uh, be uh, streaming on Twitch a little bit more sim stuff from now on. Yeah. Randike! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, well, we just arrived at where Gaia Factory is and we're gonna head in. Have you been to Gaia Factory before? No, I'm a first time. This is your first time? Yeah. Oh, you're gonna love this place. Yes. You like simulators, right? Yes. Driving <laughs> sims? All right. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna love it. Yeah. Think this is the place? You ready? Good stuff. Oh my god. 180 screen. Full half circle. Yeah, <laughs> Obviously this place is the real deal. And this is the closest thing that they have to the frame that I just kind of welded up today. But this is like an actual name brand one and it's so much sturdy. It does have a little play in there, but it's nowhere near as bad as what mine was. In fact, you can see that the steel on the frame is actually much thicker than what was on mine. But it's overall the same design. So I'd say mine, like the $50 thing off Amazon was just like a copy of something like this. But then this is where things get real. So these are like the real proper track racer frames and they just do not budge at all. Look at the base, the frame, everything is solid, doesn't move. And as you can see, triple, well, that's four monitors, triple monitors. This one's probably my favorite because of the two projectors that give you this like 180 kind of field of view. And yeah, they just, so many of these things all set up all around. This is a little bit of a different frame than the track racer one, but this one still looks really sturdy. It's nice. So we're having a little bit of a celebration today, a bit of a pizza party, because my boy Mao here, Yay. he speaks amazing English. He's the best English speaker in Japan. I'm putting him on the spot. <laughs> He's looking for Taki for translation. <laughs> but uh, if you guys don't know, Mao competes in J1 as well, uh, Formula Drift J1, as well as D1 Lights. And for his first time ever, he drove Meihan and got second place. So um, he's pretty much, all of his success comes from the simulators in Gaia Factory with that. So we're also celebrating that second place today. And uh, we're going to be doing some training together and getting me ready for Suzuka. He didn't understand a single word I said. <laughs> I've just been doing a bunch of practice and Miles now jumping in doing some tandem practice. And it is so cool to watch the first person perspective of these two guys battling, but then being able to also watch it from a spotter's perspective, it's so beneficial. So good. Whoa, a little hit, nice. <laughs> this is great. Can't wait till I get more comfortable in the sim. Let's watch one of Mal's runs. Whoa. Wow. Daiki's turn to drive. Let's go, Daiki. He's a pro at this. I think my favorite thing is looking at Daiki's focus face. <laughs> now he's laughing. Oh, 
I just finished doing a bunch of practice and I am so physically tired and drained. I, I've never felt this tired before driving, but I guess because I'm using like more of my brain and my eyes to focus on what I need to do instead of going by feeling of the car, it's just a whole new skill that I'm learning. This is awesome. Everyone, we're all about to jump in a car meet at Tatsumi PA and go for a drive on the Shotoko. The only time that I will ever do anything street. Before we leave, I wanted to show you guys, they've got a new diorama here, and this looks amazing. It's like a full workshop, there's vending machines, you've got this little guy in the front, I can't, what is this? A uh, Laurel? Si Sanyong. Si Sanyong? Ah, oh, Laurel, yeah. Laurel. And then, it's even got all like the slap stickers. Oh my gosh, it's got a Tsurikawa! It's got the subway handle, guys, and the bent number plate. That's so cool! He just switched it out for the Aristo. And then he's got a JZX90 up there on a lift. All these things in the garage. Of course, a spare R154, because I drove that car. Uh, look, engine, hoist, and everything. Such a cool little diorama. Rotary mission. Rotary transmission? Oh, and there's a rotary engine there too. Nice. And there's a Corona there. A couple packs of Corona up the back. This is so cool. Bosozoku scooter. Oh yeah, nice 750. Man, this is so cool. Oh wow, there's like a little uh, cutting torch set up too. Man, that's sick. As they say, when you're having fun, time flies by. It's like 1.30 in the morning right now. I don't even know what happened. But uh, I got a lot of training in, I'm really excited. I feel like I understand the course a lot better. Even though I couldn't like, I got a, probably three laps total today. I did the course perfectly. But that's mainly just because I'm not used to yet, like the simulator kind of thing and using only my eyes. I feel so exhausted, it's wild. But um, I feel like I've got a lot more confidence going into Suzuka Twin Circuit round next weekend. We should do really, really well. Daiki, did you have fun? Yes, of course. <laughs> Daiki got to drive a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I love the people at Gaia Factory, they're so nice. Yeah. Yeah. I said this last time, but if you're ever in Japan, come to Gaia Factory. You can literally drive one of their sims for as low as 200 yen. That's less than $2 for 10 minutes. Like the cheapest package they have is 200 yen every 10 minutes. And then they have other packages for all like the fancy sims and stuff like that, which is still really, really cheap. I think the most expensive one's only like 600 yen, which is still like, what? $3.50 USD or something right now at the exchange rate. So make sure you come out here. Check out Gaia Factory, they've been supporting me a lot and training me for Formula Drift this year, which is gonna be awesome. It's the next day and I'm back at the shop and I'm sure you guys wanna see how this thing works. I've got everything plugged up. I'm gonna quickly fire up a set of Corsa and I'm gonna try and do a couple laps in this. Now bear in mind, I am not the greatest at sim driving. I'm sure in a couple months I will be a lot better, but uh, yeah, I'm just glad that this thing, it doesn't do this anymore. Seriously, you guys saw what it was like at the start of the video. I can flick the wheel. A bit of vibration still in the frame. It's still not the greatest frame in the world, but we made it better. And that's the main thing. I can pull on the hydro and the whole frame doesn't wobble around and go crazy. So anyways, let's log in, fire up the game. Probably need to adjust this a little bit. I haven't checked force feedback or anything like that, but for the most part, I'm sure we'll be able to do some driving. Not 
too bad. Oh, we hit the guardrail. <sighs> all in all, for this budget setup, this is perfect for what I need. It's to understand, learn the layouts, and make sure that I'm going into places that I've never driven before with some kind of seat time, knowing where the initiation points and need certain points and visual cues that I need to look out for to know where I need to put my car in the right place. So for the next couple of days, I'm gonna be practicing the Suzuka twin layout for FDJ2 in this, and just really trying to get super comfortable with it. I really think this is gonna be a powerful tool for me. Now, once again, I do wanna stress, this is a very, very cheap sim setup. While I do, you know, a Thrustmaster T300 is actually kind of expensive with the pedal kit. Um, I'm using a Logitech shifter, which I bought a little adapter for. Um, to make it USB so I didn't have to use a Logitech steering wheel to plug it into. And then I just bought a really cheap, I think it was like a $60 like hydro thing off Amazon that came from China. Um, it all works. It works quite well. Probably the most expensive thing is the bride's seat in this setup. But all in all, I think everything like bolted onto the frame sim-wise bar this seat is probably under $1,000. Computer, that's another story. Um, you're gonna need something that's pretty decent to be able to power a lot of the graphics and all that kind of stuff. Um, and the VR headset. I think this VR headset is like one of the cheapest you can get. It's like the Quest 2. Works perfect for what I need. And um, I think, I, think I, I paid like $300 for it. And this computer I bought from a friend who was, uh, it was a Sayonara sale, they were leaving Japan. And he did a really good deal on this too. I, I can't remember exactly, but I think it was around the $400 mark. Um, and it's uh, got like a Ryzen 7 in there and a really nice Radeon graphics card, Team Red system. Um, and it works. The monitor is just something I had laying around. But yeah, I went with the VR setup initially just because I wanted to have that immersive feeling. I think definitely VR has a really good benefit, especially for tracks that you've never driven at before with learning those visual cues and just learning the distance a bit better. Um, but I do want like a triple monitor setup um, when we get a different frame and a much better sim setup with different, you know, steering wheel setup and pedal box that actually feels real. But I'm gonna keep doing some modifications to this. Let me know um, if you guys are interested in this kind of content too. It's something that I'm starting to geek out a lot about. Um, for those of you that know me well, um, and have been following for a long time, you know my background's IT, and what I used to do before I did car stuff was uh, network infrastructure stuff, but this is like another kind of IT techie kind of thing that's just starting to bleed into the car stuff. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I kind of want to tweak some more, see if we can modify these pedals a bit uh, to make them feel more real, maybe add some stiffer springs to them or some like little like polyurethane kind of stoppers or something, I don't know. But yeah, I like this. This is gonna give me a lot of good practice and uh, I can't wait to see it in action and how it makes me drive and feel more relaxed and comfortable at uh, Formula Drift Rounds. With that guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Smash that like button, write a comment and subscribe. Make sure you support us by going to summit.net and grab yourself some of our latest apparel or merchandise. We have some really awesome water bottles right now in stock, so go check them out. And I'll see you all in the next one where we'll be doing most likely the tune on the S15 for Formula Drift. Thanks for watching. See you again guys, peace.